So what's your next project? And it's going to be on your own label or are you going to... <laughs> or are you looking to, to go back to a major? Well, okay. I, uh, on Planet Nine, I uh, released Sugar and Spice in Japan, One mm -hmm. Territory, Beauty in the Streets, which was stateside, which was an, a mixtape, uh, Kiss Japan, Kiss the U.S. Canada, and Kiss World. Now, the first thing that I released in 2014 was a With Love EP on Valentine's Day. Mm -hmm. There's a series of EPs coming from Maya. Uh, I know that my fans are hungry for music, so I'm hustling to make that happen. <laughs> And April 21st, being that this is the 16th anniversary of what we were talking about earlier, right. the release of the first album in 1998, mm -hmm. I'll be gifting them with Sweet 16, an EP of six songs. And what I'll be doing is self-manufacturing a physical CD for when I tour. And there's a mayamaya.com store, a music shop, where they can order physical CDs if they'd like the compilation. But after this, you know, I'm willing to entertain majors. I think it's a great marriage now that I'm in the right place in my creative life as well as business life. Mm -hmm. And the business of majors has settled because at once upon, well, once upon a time there were lots of merges and that was a dangerous time to yeah. entertain going back into the system. But yeah, I'm ready now. Well, I remember when I interviewed Nelly um, last year you know, he talked about how he had to switch his whole thinking, you know, in terms of putting out mixtapes, putting out free music, and also just the way singles perform. You know, during his, you know, when he was first in his heyday, he would give the label a hit single and they would do the rest. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they would turn around and turn into a multi platinum album when then he was in a position where he would give the label a hit single and then the album wouldn't do very well. And, you know, he had to really rethink it. Like, how much have you had to really rethink how you do music and how you interact with your fans? Well, I think when you're an artist, you have to be an artist. What was that? What is that? Don't get lost in the hype. Don't get lost in budgets or thinking about numbers all the time. What is it that you want to say? How do your fans feel? What do they want to say? What do they want to hear? You can do the research one-on-one, -on -one, group by group, social media, tiny chat, Ustream, whatever it is and get the research done before you take a test or put lots of money behind it. Um, it's changed because, well, technology's changed and obviously the whole Napster thing has decreased record sales. Mm -hmm. So labels are very cautious as far as where they put their money, who they're going to put their money behind, what song they're going to throw millions of dollars behind to make things happen because when you do that, hey, once it's out, it's not like you can go to the store and buy an A-side, B-side single anymore. Right. It's out there and you can download it for free. Mm -hmm. So the return on money is very risky because you might not ever see that again. So the, the dollars spent to put product out are non-existent. No, for some people, for most of the industry is what I'm trying to say, because it's a very risky time with free music everywhere. But that doesn't mean that you can't sell albums or records or give your fans an experience and still tour, you know, if you are a performer. So there are ways and then there are well, social media returns, advertising returns, all on the internet, other ways to make revenue or income. But it's really about the people. It will come when your art is right. There's really nothing to worry about. You've, you've got to spend the time and actually in generate the budget somehow, some way to be able to shut down and create what people need, you know, that they do want to go out and support. What was the reason behind the, you know, the, the geographic um, releases of your album? Like why, why the Japan only, why the Canada only, why the US only? <laughs> well, you know, that was a, an interesting time. In 2007, my album with Motown Universal, within the Universal system, I, uh, mer well, I transferred to from Interscope. And we worked on a project, which was my fourth album, for about a year and a half. The release dates changed several times. They forgot to tell Japan, who is many hours ahead of the United States, to pull it back. So it came out in Japan by accident, prematurely. There were things going on internally anyways, with the project and budget and audits, whatever. But okay. it came out. And my lawyer said, look, you can either sue and spend some time in court for negligence, or you can walk away and be independent. I suggest the independent route. 
So really? I tried, yeah. So, so, so you left the label because the album got leaked early in Japan. Well, when, once the album is leaked, it's out there in the universe and everyone has it, so there's no release. Um, it technically comes out as far as a contract is concerned and you've turned in your masters because it's now released, but irresponsibly. Hmm. So now what do we do? Well, it's gonna be shelved. I understand what that means. I don't wanna experience that again, so let me find another way. Let me go clear my head find out uh, what I can do about this. There are other things or entities to entertain, but um, I have a studio. Let's put my team together. Let's start art. Let's get back to the core of music. So that's what I did. And, and honestly, because of that leak, Japan, there was a label out there called Manhattan <clears throat> that approached my team and said, we're interested in Maya coming over here and doing some touring as well as delivering us a U.S sung album but just in this one territory because we love liberation <laughs> mm -hmm. so an opportunity came from that leak and i said hey why not i don't want to sit here and wallow in my depression or sadness or get too dark because of this letdown i feel like i've let down my fans they don't know the backstory let's do something about it i learned how to executive produce and assemble a project engineer skills went up the roof, assembling a team, production teams, even my, my performance team based out of DC. Mm -hmm. They went to Japan for the first time. So a lot of blessings came from that for everyone around me, including myself. And I just didn't stop from there because it became really fun and fulfilling. <laughs>